Okay, so a wild Nightman appeared. Introduce yourself, Nightman. Hi, this is Nightman. And he's also played Fallout 4, so, yeah. Yeah. Here's the interesting. It's a special podcast guest that we just threw in for no reason. Yeah. Anyway, so here's a little disruptive segment. So in case all of you fell asleep for the last hour, we're going to go through a little brief recap of what uh, we were all talking about before, but mostly with Nightman. So, uh, Nightman, uh, how long have you been playing Fallout 4? How many hours did you crank it? Hmm, it's been a while, so I'll just look at my Steam page. So, let's see. 33 hours in. <laughs> so. uh, well, I got you beat, at least. Yes, that's what I was laughing about. Okay, but still relatively the same. So, what did you think of the game so far? You haven't beaten it, right? Uh, not really, but I will say that the game is pretty good. Although it is a little weaker than the last few entries, but okay. not, a, not a bad game, at least. Okay, yeah, we pretty much said that too. So we're gonna, so we're gonna like quick quiz you on a uh, few, or not quiz you, but like uh, just talk about a f- few of the things we uh, mentioned before. What did you think about the graphics? Well, oh. they're standard for uh, for the current gen. And then again, I was playing on PC, so. Well, me and Down Phoenix uh, were were kind of agreed that like uh, the graphics in here were a lot better than uh, the previous three in new vegas like it has more life to it it's more refined it has a style and personally i like it i would like to see it in uh future games future yeah. fallout games but mm-hmm. it probably might change in the future too but hopefully not because I, well, I like I, the style i mentioned that the animation could still use some work you know it's not like quite there but everything else is very nice fitting yeah, yeah and that was because you were playing on a ps4 right well, yeah, I think the lower frame rates might have something to do with it. Yeah, so, you know, unconfirmed, because uh, I, I really didn't notice anything when I was playing it on PC. Then again, I do hear they did some patches for the console versions to make the game look better, so... Yeah, th- there has been some improvements, particularly with the frame rate. Which is good. Okay, so I think we all agree that the graphics look pretty good, either for both as a Fallout game and for a, a next-gen game. So, uh, Nightman, what do you think of the combat in uh, Fallout 4 compared to the previous games? Or as a whole. I like it. It's a uh, works pretty well. It's kind of uh shall I say, it's not so much different from the previous games, but there's a lot of stuff that the uh, that they did pretty well with. Like the shooting works pretty well, so Yeah. You would agree it plays a lot more like a regular shooter like Call of Duty or Battlefield it, or it, it's a lot more shooter. It's a lot more fluid than uh the previous uh uh, game Fallout 3 and New Vegas specifically because uh, yeah. I personally found like the eight the the shooting in that was really stiff and that was a necessity almost to uh, a, be efficient. If there's anything to compare, I probably compare it to how Borderlands series kind of does their shooting, considering mm-hmm. they have like a similar premise. Uh, interesting comparison with it. Uh, what do you think of the VAT system? Because uh, we mentioned like uh, because the combat is so much better, VATs didn't wasn't as n- uh, relied upon in uh, Fallout 4. Didn't think about too much about that system, but okay. So basically, so that's just like you just you just forgot about it because yeah, the, co- the combat was so much more reliable. Because um, y- you were a- you had control over the combat, so you didn't really need like the computer assisted whatever to help you. Yeah, computer computer assistance like the AI characters are kind of useless at times anyway. No, 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 not not that the vats because. It was a computer oh. that like did all the calculating and pointing for you, and then telling you like how what your chance oh. of shooting here was. That's what I meant. I wasn't talking about your allies. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was. Uh, to me, that was just kind of there. Kind of like an obligation because it's a Fallout game. Pretty much. Well, the, we and Down Phoenix talked about how it was. It still had just a little bit of incentive to use because of the critical meter, which lets you do like a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet. All in all, I think we all agree that the combat is in four is like. A lot smoother and a lot uh, more efficient, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what so what did you think about the perk system in four? I like it. Uh, I what about the... compared to the previous ones? Well, let's just say, uh, let's just say, I like how how you could just give them a give them a little level up to like how there's like different types of uh, perks for everything. I'm sure the other games had that too, but yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of that statement was kind of just like uh, yeah, that that was like invisible because so... <laughs> that's what all the other Fallout game perks are like. If I'll say this though, I do like the little animations they give. Uh, they give each like little perk when you're in the when you're in the, en- the menus. Really? Yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, like, that didn't really add much to the game. Then I don't have too much to say about the perks, as other than they work pretty well. Well, me and Down Phoenix were talking. we talked about like how it was uh, dumbed down from, uh, or not. 
Well, yeah, dumbed down and simplified from the previous version because you didn't have, like, the skill points that was needed mm -hmm. to get certain perks and that, like, every level you pretty much just got a perk, unlike in previous games you had to, like, level up a couple of times before even getting a perk, making the perks more special and more specific because uh, the other thing is you have no level cap in this game, apparently, so you can actually get all the perks eventually. Which makes your character lose your care like there's no character build. There's like no real identity after a certain point. Like everyone's just gonna be the same. Is what was going on with that? Oh, I, okay. Sorry about that. I guess uh, I guess when you put it that way, yeah, it's too simplified. And then there's another thing that I was talking with about Down Phoenix. Down Phoenix is uh, some of the perks you almost don't really need it because the combat is so efficient that um, you yeah you pretty much don't really need any of the perks, like, say, for a couple, like, say, lockpicking, hacking, uh, the mods, and some of the combat perks. The perk system, like, like, I like the, I like the change and to see what they did with it, but I definitely, like, preferred the older one, even if it was a pain in the ass. I can see where you're going with. What did you think of the modding in this game? Because, uh, me and Down Phoenix liked it. <laughs> oh, man, I haven't modded the game at all, but I have seen some of them where you shoot a cat out of a cannon, or out of the fat boy. Did you have anything to say to that down Phoenix about what I was trying to say? What's that? So we were talking about mods, and I wasn't talking. I was talking about the modding in the game, not so much the PC. Oh shoot! Sorry. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I've really got nothing to add. Yeah, I haven't really uh, to say much on that either. Really, you didn't do any of like the the modding with um the weapon parts, uh the 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 power armor and all that. I've been kind of like spend too much time with like the quests and everything. I guess I attempted to do it a few times, but. Man, too much on that. Oh, uh, okay. Well, he's only got like 30 hours into the game. Maybe he has, just hasn't messed with that part. Yeah. Uh, true enough, I suppose. And maybe... Well, you don't need to mod weapons, but it is like a really cool aspect of it. So that was all the changes we wrote down, aside from like the the conversations you do with other characters. Uh, What did you think about the settlements, or have you gotten to that point yet? Settlements... Where, you know, you clear out an area, make a base for them, because uh, Pres oh. Preston's like, uh, hey, we we of the Minutemen got to make the Commonwealth better. Oh, that. Yeah. I got, I, now I see what you mean when you're, like, making your own town and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, building, like, a little fort in, like, the areas you conquered. I kind of like that idea. Kind of makes you feel like, like you're, uh, it's a word I'm just trying to look for here. A general? Yeah, kind of like a general. You're, uh, or a mayor? Yeah, mayor, too. That works. You could pretty much like build your own town, uh, you know, get some people to join in on your on your uh, your fort and everything. I think that's a really neat idea, and I'm glad they kind of added something into that. Okay, but if you but if they took that out of the game, would it have changed the the game as a whole for you? Not really. Okay, because uh, I was also talking with Down Phoenix about how like uh, unself sufficient the settle settlements are. Like for instance, like uh, like did did you ever go to the settlements to like fix a certain thing they were unhappy with? Like uh, like oh hey, Nightman, I we don't have enough water here. Can you build us like a couple of springs and shit? That'd be great. Maybe make a couple of beds for us. I mean, you you like that stuff. Uh, yeah, we had to micromanage them. <laughs> I haven't gotten into that part yet, so... Okay, but basically, like, the settles... They don't do shit, like, once you make the settlement for them. Like, if... Like, uh, you, you get what I mean? Like, uh, we were talking... Yeah. I was talking with Down Phoenix about how it's like, they're just... They're kind of lazy. Yes, they are. They don't do shit, and you're, you're... You're pretty much acting like their mother at this point. Their parent taking care of them, building their defenses, making sure they're nice and well-fed and sleeping in a comfy bed while they just sit around, like, playing with themselves. Yeah. I remember I just, I just made a bed for them, and they're pretty much fine with that, so... Yeah, you don't even need to... You, there's no even no real need for quality. Although that's what, although the game says, like, you should build, like, furniture and stuff for them, but I just never cared. It's like, if they're gonna ask me to do all this shit, I don't care. Yeah. They're they're not that important. I gave them a bed and help. If I, considering uh, I'm lazy enough to just have the bed outside, they're just like, yeah, I'll sleep there. Even if it rains or there's a nuclear storm or something like that. Yeah, they don't get give a shit. dragged off. They don't give a shit. They'll do it anyway. Well, anyways, the next thing we also mentioned is, uh, have you met a legendary enemy yet? Or found a legendary item? Not really. Oh, well, chops that. that off. Nothing that. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, well, he's only played 30 hours, so I imagine maybe if he has, he maybe just didn't realize yeah. the impact of it. 
I, I gotta but they're keep... the enemies that have the stars next to their name. Have you seen any like that? No, I have not. Oh, hmm. Because usually at like around the twenty hour mark, they start appearing at like at least like one enemy somewhere. Yeah. But hmm, who knows? Anyway, so moving on. Uh, yeah. Now this feature is gonna be explained by Down Phoenix because it's about the Pip Boy app. Yeah, the thing and I that have they a added. lot of experience with that. I don't know. Have you ever messed with it, Wiz? Uh, I, my phone didn't have enough space for it, so I couldn't mess with it. So this is all you, Down Phoenix. You're up. Okay. So whenever the uh, game was announced at E3, they made a huge deal about the collector's edition, the Pip-Boy edition, mm -hmm. which was like the little arm piece that you use in the game with the computer that you can manage your uh, character and inventory and all that stuff. And you, know, you were actually going to be able to do that using your smartphone by putting it inside the little case thing. Which, and which it sounded would, like a cool idea. Yeah, it, it essentially was going to act like the in-game inventory for you. So you wouldn't have to pause the game and go into that separately. Uh, well, I really found, I mean, at first it seemed like a really neat idea, but I really found as I used it more and more within the game, I just started pausing more and more instead of actually looking at my phone. It just didn't seem like it made a lot of sense to, to use that. Like, eventually it got to a point where the only time I would ever use that was just a quick travel. Or uh, fast travel? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, uh, well, when you pause the game, it gives you time to think, right? And, like, uh, unlike with the Pip-Boy, where it's, like, in real time, and then... There was a few other things you mentioned about it, like how it didn't work that well? Well, yeah, for instance, you know, whenever you go through the game, when you pause the game to go into your Pip-Boy to look at all the different tabs that you can look at, you know, you had your category for items and for quests and, you know, all that good stuff, right? And uh, one thing I noticed is that quests were pretty much absent from the Pip-Boy app itself. So you couldn't use everything on the Pip-Boy app. There were certain things you had to still pause the game to access. Which which kind of destroys the point of the Pip-Boy app, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it does. Like, I mean, it's a really cool feature to have, especially if you want to make the game a little bit harder for yourself by having to make everything handled in real time. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like a cool thing if you want to do that, but you can only do certain things in real time. And so that does kind of hurt the uh, immersion factor of it a bit. Overall, your uh, thought on the Pip-Boy app? It's a very nice attempt at something like this for a game. I you know, really am interested in the possibility of using a smartphone or computer apps that can kind of integrate with the game. Yeah, like, like like some sort of outside source. Right, but it's just not quite there. It's kind of a disappointing app in my eyes, just kind of like how the Grand Theft Auto app was, uh, where it seemed like a really cool idea, but essentially it boiled down to just adding a couple of little things that were really optional and didn't really add to value to the game. So basically, if you were to recommend this to anybody, you'd say, like, uh, you're not missing much, right? Exactly. Now, if you've got the actual Pip-Boy edition, by all means, but you're probably going to end up still pausing in most of the time anyways. Neat idea. Execution, not so... not so, uh, great. Yeah. And I can understand. I'm sure there were some limitations that prevented everything from functioning through that, but... I guess, uh, now there is one really cool thing about the Pip-Boy app, though, is you can play the games. You know, like the little mini-games that you can unlock oh, the game. You can still yeah, play like, those in there. there. Like, there was a Donkey Kong, like, uh, tape you can get to play games, which is kind of yeah. neat. And those are still playable, so that's kind of a cool feature. You know, I, do, I did enjoy that a bit. But a lot of those games, you really had to still be linked up to the, uh, the main game. game? Some, yeah. Oh, so, so, you, so you can't even play it offline. You know, that'd be kind of cool, like, you have the app connected to the game. You get those hollow tapes, and then you can play it offline. Yeah. Now I don't know. They might have. They might have updated it since then. I haven't messed with it much lately. They might yeah. have made an update to kind of implement that feature. But at least at the first month or so of launch, it didn't have that functionality. In other words, give an app a few years, it'll probably be better then. If they do anything with it. Yeah, I'm talking about apps for games in general. Yeah, yeah, there's still some work to be done. I mean, there's some games that have had some interesting apps. Like, uh, I think I remember the, uh, for whatever reason, Metal Gear Solid Five didn't have one, The Phantom Pain, but the Ground Zeroes did. Huh. And it had some interesting little tidbits in, in Ground Zeroes, so I don't know. Well, maybe in Ground Zero it was like a test to see how people, uh, uh, what people's reaction were to it, and I guess the reactions weren't favorable. No, so well, yeah, maybe it's like, well, it seems favorable. Maybe it's just not worth really investing time into it. 
Yeah, like okay. like you know, it wasn't like everyone demanded it, so they didn't put it in the in the end game. Oh uh, well, they added sprinting to Fallout Four, which was yeah, it's there. Not, it's a nice addition. Nothing yeah. wrong with it. Yeah, it, uh, it adds a little bit more immersion to it. Like it's just like oh, I can move faster because I I didn't realize like oh yeah you you really couldn't run in the in the three D uh, Fallout games in the previous ones, mm -hmm. so. That was kind of nice, and it uses up action points as your energy meter. Pretty cool. It's not quite as bad as sprinting in the average FPS game, because you don't run out of sprint after, like, five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. Oh, yeah. Well-trained military soldier or gets tired in ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. Puss. Our hero, everybody. Pussies. Okay. But, so, but yeah, it's still... It, 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 it could have been better, I guess, but it's better than not having it at the same time. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a thing in Fallout 4. Might as well mention it. Like maybe, yeah. maybe you didn't even think about it because I didn't think about it until I looked it up. And it's like, like yeah. what, what new things? Because I was trying to find out what other additions were that were actually new to the Fallout series. Yeah, I would, I would have liked if they would have had a little more momentum in the move, move it. Like, um, like say for instance, like uh, Mirror's Edge or Battlefield. Parkour. It seems like you can really get some nice fluid movement. You know, where you can kind of like run. And then kind of like do a diving slide or something like that, you know, to get like some quick cover fire. Parkour. There wasn't anything like that, obviously. But, yeah, it was uh, kind of just kind of generic. So what additions would you have liked to see in uh, Fallout 4? Uh, well, I mentioned my piece, uh, the legendary parts that you can find and then put on your guns instead of actually having to find the gun itself and then be disappointed that it didn't have the effect you wanted. Well, I think as far as additions, I would have liked to see a little more procedurally generated content because it seemed like the game had a big push towards making it to where you can get hundreds of more hours potentially out of it than, say, Fallout 3. Yeah, it because feels like they did it have a lot of procedurally generated things, but it seemed like it was kind of limited in that regard. Like with the settlements, for instance, you know, I wish there was a little bit more involvement with that, you know, more random events and things like that that could happen. Some more significance with it, or like, uh, yeah, like you know, maybe they could help discover uh, areas on like in the Commonwealth that I, you know, I happened to miss or couldn't find because you know I was I, I happened to slip by it or something. Like make them do something for you. That'd yeah, be a exactly. Thing. Speaking yeah, that of, too. Yeah, give them uh, roles besides just in signing into crops or guarding or whatever. There's probably other more additions you could think of to do, but uh, let's try. Uh, I'm not gonna let the dr video drag out for that part. Yeah. So, um, okay, here's a here's a thing. Um, I, I wrote this a little later. What did you think of like uh, Fallout 4 with all its content? Unlike other games that uh, previously were like, oh, you have to actually pay some more money to unlock. Uh, more content of the actual game, cause well, uh, well, basically Fallout 4 came as came pretty complete, and I was pretty satisfied with uh, what I got for it, especially for the yeah. price I paid for at yeah. uh, Green Man Gaming. Yeah, I mean it's definitely worth the full price. I mean you're not gonna feel like that you got gypped. Like, oh great, I bought a sixty dollar game and I got like seven hours of gameplay, <laughs> or even if it is a game that feels fully realized, you know, realizing that they cut out certain chunks and pieces to uh, kind of sell you later. Yeah, as DLC, yeah. even though yeah. it's like you're supposed to have this from the beginning, but people were cheap. So, that's, you know, you gotta give props to Fallout 4 for a coming complete, okay? And right. uh, I mean, and they do have DLC coming out, but it does seem like it's more of an afterthought. It wasn't something that uh, um, that they piecemealed planned. out of the game yeah. ahead of time. I mean, maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe when we start seeing the DLC, it seems like, oh, that's why there's this empty spot on this map. It's just so they're going to hide it for the DLC or, you know, something like that. But Well, even if that was true, the game is so vast and huge that, uh, well, it was still worth the money you paid for. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it also, uh, I do have a few friends that will, will, that will wait for, like, a Game of the Year edition before purchasing. And the whole DLC thing is pretty much the reason why. It kind of helps. That's true, but I guess what I'm saying is like, I mean, waiting for the game year edition is obviously a good idea, but Usu at least usually. here it doesn't seem like it's a necessity. Like, I would totally recommend if you're one of those people that wanted to wait for a game year edition, maybe instead just wait for the game to come down a little bit in price and buy it, and then if you really want more after that, then get the DLC. But yeah, chances are, you know, you might get more than enough just off the base purchase without even having to think about that. Yeah, and that's the point I'm getting at, because, like, uh, there were, like, before, there were a lot of game releases that were just, like, screwing the players over, 
which I thankfully did not get into. Uh, I forget what, what game examples I could come up with, but they, they definitely existed, hence why I brought it up. Cause like when, Elder Scrolls or something? Mm, no, uh, nothing like that. Oh, um, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, oh yeah. We're yeah. Something things. like that. Yeah, eight I... maps at launch, and we're going to sell the other 15 to you in a season pass. Yeah, this is why I honestly don't really like the new Battlefront that much. Although this is a little off topic. No, so like, we, we're using it as an example, so go on. Yeah, but anyway, not even with the season pass, Battlefront 2 from 10 years ago has a lot more content. And you didn't even need to pay for all that shit. Because it all came in one nicely packaged packaged. In other words, I'm pretty glad that I got that game at a uh, sales price as, as opposed to a full price. Cause plus, I, it was, plus it was cheaper. Yeah, a lot cheaper. And, and a full price get, for like full price, that game ain't worth it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get the games are more expensive and therefore they have to recoup their costs. But they didn't have a campaign or anything like that to really justify having a limited amount of content. Like, if they had an actual single-player campaign like they did in Battlefront, the original games, for yeah, example... Yeah, because everyone was looking forward to Battlefront because Battlefront 2 was so good, and we've been... Everyone's been teased about Battlefront 3. Yeah, we're going off topic to, to take it. So, yeah, it, so after, the, like, uh, you know, announcements of it, like, failing or, like, you know, not coming out or anything, it's like, finally, Battlefront, and it's like a big fuck you in the face. Yeah. Ugh, and it, it plays like a mod of Battlefield. I mean, I've already got Battlefield 4 with all the content, and that game, the base game of Battlefield 4, for example, still had way more content than Battlefront does right now. You know, they, And that also had a single-player campaign and co-op and all that good stuff on top of it. You know, it's almost like, you know, they could have just taken Battlefield 4 and just, like, sold a Star Wars DLC where it's, like, you know, skins and stuff, and you... You know, that could actually might have been better, but no, no. We can just sell this game by itself, and people will buy it. Yeah, well, not surprising there because of the Star Wars name alone. Yes, and all the yeah. other Star Wars thing at the time, but getting back to Fallout 4. Okay, no more Star Wars. We're back to a different future. All right, so... Star Wars is the past. Yes. In a <laughs> galaxy far, far away. A long, a long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> <laughs> 